Well, hello, it's Bruce Williams, and today I'd like to present another interesting surgical pathology case from the Joint Pathology Center. Today we're going to talk about an uncommon lesion in baboons, which goes by a very long name, the uterine tumor resembling ovarian sex cord tumors, also known as utros. The case we're going to be looking at today was one of a series of four baboon submissions from the Southwest National Primate Research Center at the Texas Biomedical Research Institute, which arrived at the JPC over the last 18 months. These cases were published in a case report in the most recent issue of Veterinary Pathology. I'm especially proud of this report because two of my residents, Dr. Erica Barkai and Dr. Emily Corbin, and one of my first residents when I first started as a training officer at the Joint Pathology, Dr. Ed Dick, who's a longtime friend, are all on this paper. I had the opportunity to sign out one of the cases, and this is the one I will present today. This tissue is from a 15-year-old intact, multiparous female hamadryad baboon, which means that she had three babies at 11, 12, and 14 years of age, and one of them was delivered by a cesarean section. She had no history of clinical disease. She also had no gross lesions associated with the reproductive tract at autopsy. We're looking at a cross-section of the uterus with the endometrium, the myometrium, and close to the serosa, a small unencapsulated neoplasm within the myometrium. The neoplasm is composed of rather banal tubules, cords, and trabeculae of low columnar to cuboidal epithelium with basally oriented nuclei, minimal anisocaryosis, anisocytosis, and no mitotic figures. If you were to see this in the ovary or testicle of the dog, you would probably assume that this would be a sex cord tumor, which includes granulosa cell tumors in the female and Sertoli cell tumors in the male. The epithelium of the sex cords generally has a nutritive and protective structure for the germ cells. And when we looked at these for the first time, we were struck by how much they looked like Sertoli cell tumors in the dog testis, or their equivalent granulosa cell tumors in the female ovary. This neoplasm was a new finding on us, as well as on the pathologists at the Texas Biomedical Research Center. And one of the wonderful things about working at the Joint Pathology Center is our staff of MD pathologists. And because baboons are very close to humans, we're often able to send unusual tumors over to, to them to help with the diagnosis. This particular case went to Dr. Philip Branton, one of our staff pathologists in the GYN breast department, who recognized it as morphologically similar to the utrosks, the uterine tumors resembling ovarian sex cords, which is a very rare tumor in humans as well, with only 50 to 60 cases currently in the human literature. He suggested a battery of immunostains, which would be appropriate for ovarian sex cord tissue. One of the immunohistochemical stains that these tissues are strongly positive is WT1 or Wilms tumor gene. And you can see that in this particular tumor, the nuclei stain appropriately and very strongly within the nucleus for WT1. 
there is also staining in the nuclei of the surrounding myometrium and endometrial stroma will also pick it up strongly. The additional stains that were suggested were negative on this particular case, including CD10, CD99, inhibin, and calretinin. But eutrosks in humans have a sort of diverse immunohistochemical pattern, with WT1 being one of the most common and strongest positive stains that you can run. They're also strongly positive in humans for calretinin, but none of the four cases that were in this collection stain for calretinin in our laboratory. So let's take a slightly closer look at these tumors. And I know that when I use the term sex cord stromal tumors, a lot of people become confused. And I can find them very confusing as well. So let's break down the tumors of the testis and the ovary. Okay, sex cord stromal tumors, both male and females can have them. These are not germ cells. Germ cells are not a part of them. When we talk about germ cells, we are talking about the cells that give rise to the sperm in the male, the eggs in the female. Um, germ cell tumors in females are known as Durst germinomas, and in males, they're seminomas. They're large, round cells with prominent nuclei that generally will be present in sheets and don't have a particular pattern. Okay, the first part of this, the sex cord cells are the granulosa cells in females and the Sertoli cells in males, cells as we said before, which have sort of a nutritive, a nursing, a protective function for the developing germ cells. And the tumors that they form are granulosa cell tumors in females and Sertoli cell tumors in male. The second part of this, the stromal cells, are supporting cells as well. In the male, they're very commonly seen in the testis as the interstitial cells or the Leydig cells. And in females, you can see them as thecal cells or some of the stromal fibrocytes. The tumors that they form are thecomas and fibromas and interstitial cell tumors in males. And finally, there are a limited number of mixed sex cord stromal tumors where actually all of these cells of so the sex cords, the granulosa cells, and the stromal cells, the thecal cells, are all mixed up. Or in the male, you'll have an interspersal of the Sertoli and the interstitial cells. They won't be separated. They'll be all mixed up within the same area. And those are called mixed sex cord stromal tumors. Now remember, we called these uterine tumors resembling ovarian sex cord tumors, okay? And the cells that we saw when we looked at the slide all resembled granulosa cells. Or you could, you could make a point that they could look like Sertoli cells in male. The one thing that we did not see in this particular case is the characteristic called Exner bodies, which are often seen in granulosa cell tumors in the ovary. And these have been reported in human eutrophs, but just were not present in the baboon cases that we looked at. So let's go back to the eutrophs. This particular case, they resemble ovarian Sertoli cells, but it's in the uterus. So that's quite odd. In humans, these particular tumors are most often seen in peri to postmenopausal women. They're usually five to six centimeters, and the largest that we saw was less than four centimeters, and that was the only one that was picked up grossly at necropsy. The rest of them were incidental findings. In humans, they're often associated with clinical signs, including abnormal uterine bleeding, pelvic or abdominal pain, or palpable masses, or generalized uterine enlargement. None of those were seen in the four baboons that were seen here. Now, the eutrophs in humans are divided into two types. There are endometrial stromal tumors with sex cord elements. Um, these tumors are mostly stromal. And this did not resemble, these are the group one, the group one uh, type of tumors in this family. There was really no endometrial stroma involved with this. These four tumors fall more into the group two type of tumor, which is largely ovarian sex cord tissue. 
In humans, the etiology for this is unknown, and these two groupings, which are grouped together, probably are considerably different because the eutrosks do not have the genetic mutations listed here, which are common to the estes. Here are some images which were taken from the paper, which were obtained from a second uh, tumor in this group of four baboons. This is another eutrosk, very little stroma, closely packed trabeculae of these epithelial cells. This one did not have the nice tubule formation that we saw in the virtual slide at the beginning of this presentation. But this one really had a nice immunohistochemical profile, which was very consistent with the human eutrosks. If we compare what we see with our baboon cases which, with what is expected in humans, and this paper's taken, or this table's taken right from the paper, we can see that all four of our cases were very strongly positive for WT1. So if we get any more of these, we'll probably know them on morphology, and then we'll confirm with WT1. For the rest of them, the other aminos that we ran, which were specific for ovarian sex core tissue in humans, did not work all that well, except for in case two, which I'm showing you right now, where we got some nice immunohistochemical staining. But the negative staining in the other three cases did not put us off of the diagnosis because of the very uh, appropriate H&E morphology. This particular tissue stained very strongly for WT1. As we said before, it's a nuclear stain, strongly positive, and very appropriate staining. It also stained positively and multifocally for inhibin. And not as well, but multifocally and strongly positive for CD10. These are all markers of ovarian sex cord tissue or granulosa type cells. Well, that covers the eutrosk. I, I certainly do uh, uh, strongly advise you to go take a look at this paper. It is present in 2018 Veterinary Pathology, Volume 55, Number 5, pages 753 to 758. I want to thank uh, uh, two of the authors, or three of the authors of the paper, my, my current resident, Dr. Emily Corbin, who worked up two of the cases in that four-case paper, uh, a a resident of mine last year who has moved on to a new job at the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research uh, after getting her board certification, Dr. Erica Barkai. They both did a fantastic job on these cases and this paper. I want to thank Dr. Philip Branton for giving us the diagnosis on an uncommon human tumor that uh, is absolutely even more uncommon in laboratory animals and a domestic species. In fact, this is the first report in animals of this tumor, so I would encourage any of you who are looking at, at non-human primates, if you see something like this in the uterus, please uh, think about this particular uh, uh, entity, and we're always happy to take a look if you want to confirm what the appropriate enemy knows, you might not have them at your place of work. And then finally, I want to thank Dr. Edward Dick, uh, a good friend of mine from the Texas Biomedical Research Center who has been down there for many years. We've worked very closely together. He always sends fantastic cases, always uh, puts our residents on these cases, so they get a couple of wonderful cases, case reports under their belt before they leave their residency. Thank you, Edward, for all your support over the years. If you are interested in laboratory animal pathology, especially a pathology of non-human primates, I would also encourage you to go to the uh, YouTube page of the Davis Thompson Foundation. There is approximately seven hours of gross pathology review covering uh, many of the common diseases of laboratory non-human primates. And I think that you will find that interesting. There's no charge to look at it. And I hope you will go there and enjoy that. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. And I hope to uh, bring you additional really cool cases from the joint pathology in coming weeks and months.